So now we've banged the truck up. Uh, if we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see here's the back end view. And these tanks over here, they've gotten banged up as well. So we can do just, you know, a similar demo, but let's take something else a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna go out of edit mode, hit always switch, hit control N to clear my canvas. I'm just gonna grab a cylinder primitive, just drag it on my canvas, go back into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. I'm gonna go into my poly frame mode and we'll make the skin shader for us. So we can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna go into my Z modeler brush, BZM. I'm gonna hover over an edge. I'm gonna hold down space bar and I'm gonna say poly group, poly loop. So I'm gonna tap here. I'm as And I, as I'm holding down, I can tap alt to give me a different poly group just to make the scene a little bit easier. Then I can go through here. I can hover over a face and we can say Q mesh, poly group all. Just pull along that normal there. And then up here, we, you know, if we're gonna collide with this, we need some information in here to have these things bend. So we can go through here, hover over an edge, say insert, multiple edge loops and then just pull along here and then since we've already done that we can just tap this one and get the exact same result um, and if you want you can hit control W make it all one poly group and now we have a barrel if you want to smooth it out just a little bit uh, you can go through here and you can hit divide but that's going to add more geometry which we may not want just yet so I'm going to go down here to dynamic instead and turn that on and that'll give us a smooth subdiv preview let's go back to our matcap gray of our barrel now it may be, you know, if, if you want to kind of scale this in to make it smaller, you can. You can also, if you start scaling in the Y and then hold down Alt, that'll scale in that X and Z direction. So you can kind of like thin it up that way as well. You can use this as an appendable mesh or you can, you, you know, you can create an insert mesh brush if you want, like B, create insert mesh, new, and you can just drag in your scene, however you want to do that. So if I go back in here, and you can see, uh, I actually have a star in here. This is what I use if I alt tap this star here, you're gonna see this is what catches my name as well as just kind of hangs out in my scene in case I need something without subdivision history. If you don't have that, you can just go in here and just say append or insert a poly mesh 3D. But so if I have that one selected, I can now go into my brush that I made, that little barrel brush, and I can just drag it out on my scene or if you prefer, uh, and it's still connected to that star. So I need to go down here to split mass points or if you prefer, you can just go in here and you can say, okay, append, or we'll do an insert, uh, that PM3D cylinder mesh, and you can just scale this down and kind of place it in your scene as well. Whatever you want to do. Uh, again, this one, the star didn't have any dynamic properties turned on, so I need to go in here and just turn on dynamic uh, to get that look. And then again, I can just, again, scale this down uh, to fit in my scene, or I can take this appended one and use that. Uh, we'll go ahead and just delete one of these out of our scene. We'll alt tap this one here and we'll use this one as our scale up just a bit. We'll use this one as our demo prop. So if I want to collide this with these other surfaces, all I need to do is go over here to my dynamics menu, which again, if you missed the previous videos, we can go here to dynamics, just grab this white dot and just drag it over here. And again, we're just docking this over here on the left hand side by the divider. So we have dynamics turned on. We have a firmness set at three, which we can change. Uh, we don't have any gravity because uh, we're just going to be basically moving this around. But of course, if you wanted to, you can just turn on gravity. Um, with this selected, when we hit collision volume, that'll calculate every other subtool in our scene as a new collision volume. So now if I have gravity turned on and I just run that simulation, it's going to smash against the front. And I forgot we set our gravity to be in that direction. So if we want to reset that, just hold down shift and snap that camera to the side, say reset the direction. We'll go ahead and turn this gravity strength down so it goes a little bit slower. And then we can drop this right into the back of our truck here. Of course, like I mentioned before, we can turn gravity off. We can hit uh, BTC to go into transpose cloth, which is gonna give us a gizmo with, going here to brush elasticity, the simulation iterations up to 100. So that's telling that transpose, you know what? Go ahead and treat this object like cloth when you move it. So what I can do is I can go over here and I can, you know, kind of tell the story of this barrel maybe, you know, bouncing out of this truck. So we can go over here and we can just kind of bang it against the side. And then maybe it kind of crinkled a little bit and then went back up and just continued to kind of carry this barrel out. And then eventually it continues to spin and then goes and hits the ground once and then maybe comes over here and lands and kind of rests over here. And all we're doing is just using that move brush with the transpose cloth. Now, of course, you can always turn on, let's play around with this a little bit more. 
we'll just undo back to where we started. There's all sorts of settings you can do, and it's, a, it's got that smooth preview turned on, so don't forget that. We're only deforming this much geometry. If you want to deform more geometry to get more geometry to kind of crumple, uh, you can just go over here and add actual divisions, or you can just keep that drop down to one, whatever's going to give you the best result for the look you're going for. So again, we can just bang that against the side here, and then go over here, and we can just crash that against the floor. And we may need to turn on a little bit of self-collision so that this geometry doesn't, or it has uh, you know some semblance, let's go ahead and turn smooth to two again, some semblance that uh, those other things exist, the other polygons exist with this geo. Now let's go over here to delete higher. We can hit W and we can control drag off a copy of these um, as needed. You can also just go over here to subtool and duplicate out one. But uh, once you've dragged out a copy, you can go through here and you can say split unmasked points and then, or mass points, doesn't really matter. And now you got two copies in here. So remember, you can always drag out copies. You can use array mesh or nano mesh or micro mesh to make these copies. In fact, in this version here, If you watch this, I actually use MicroPoly to go through here and create uh, these canisters and kind of fit them into the back of the truck. So a lot of cool new features you can use to get that result that you want. And also remember, just like we said in the previous video, you don't have to sit here and just rely on simulation for all of your results. If you're over here and you get a result and you want to change it or you want to update it, there's a lot of uh, sculpting brushes you can go through here and you can apply these uh, subdivisions. You can go through here again to that macro we talked about. And you can do run and enhance details. Go through here to your layers. You can over crank that enhance details a little bit if you want. You can bake all. You can go in here with like your trim dynamic brush. You can go in here with your pinch brush. And again, you can also follow up with maybe brush cloth nudge and still, you know, use a little bit of simulation to kind of again tell that story that you're looking to tell with your meshes.